Hi everybody. So it is Tuesday morning and I thought, oh, you know what? I am going to crack on and get some of my paper bag prints uh, reading done because uh, I'm very excited to find out what happens uh, in the story. And we are nearing the end now. Now, can anyone remember what has happened so far in the story? If you pause the video and then talk to your parent or your brother or just to yourself because at the end of the day I'm speaking to myself at the moment because there is nobody here. Hello. No, see, no one. So um uh just talk to yourself. Relive, retell your version of the story. Um use your one note and then when you're ready uh come back and we will go back through it. So, have you retold your version of the story? Did you use your OneNote to help you? I hope so. So, let's let's go back through quickly, shall we? Let us summarise. So, we were introduced to this uh, valley location where, unfortunately, in the corner, there was this dump, but we didn't know why it was there. Uh, but every day, lorries would visit and dump all of the rubbish from the local town there. Um, and there was an assortment of stuff. Uh, but despite the fact that there was all of this stuff everywhere, nature was finding a way to survive. It was clinging on, wasn't it? It was finding somewhere to live. And then we got this example of the birds living in the, in the TV and newts and tadpoles living in like jars and stuff. So it was finding a way. It was resilient. Not resilient everywhere, though. Animals were more sensible than humans. They stayed away from the poison pool. Um, which I asked if we felt that the author liked or disliked um, animals. And in class, for sure, we felt that he, uh, the author... Colin, Colin Thompson wasn't a fan of humans um, and was quite negative towards them. Then we came to this page where there's not as much going on, but we have this. We have an armchair outside of a railway carriage and the railway carriage in its heyday was pulled through the, through the countryside, through different places, but then when steam trains were retired, they either went to the seaside for holiday places or um, it came to this dump and it was tumbled down. So it wasn't it wasn't in the best of conditions. And then we are finally introduced to the paper bag prince. He comes riding down here every day. Uh, they called him the paper bag prince. Um, it was just a nickname they gave him. It's not actually his actual name. Um, he was a big fan of the animals, except for which which animal um, was a little bit nervous around him. Who can remember? The dog. Correct. So, um, and then I asked you to make a prediction of whether you felt that the relationship between the dog and the man might change. I think we're starting to see a change as we go through the rest of the book. And we didn't like all of the noise and the grumbling did he and he collected things up he liked to collect things he didn't like to see things thrown away and we got the contrast of all the um piles of rubbish it not being very neat and tidy whereas he would put things into neat and tidy piles so we got the contrast the different the difference and then one day whilst he's having a nice um lay in the sunshine all of the noise stopped and he felt that it was a holiday. And he was like, it's not a bank holiday. What's going on? And then this rather rude lady called Sarah, just like to point out, not every Sarah's are rude. Most Sarah's are very polite. Um, so Sarah arrived, um, telling him that uh, he could have the dump back. And we're like, dump back what are you talking about and it transpires that the um 
the paper bag prince, if the land was his the entire time, but the count, um, his farmhouse had burnt down, and so the council used the land as a rubbish dump. They'd put him in another house and they'd given him a load of money for it, but it never really made him very happy. And he finally got it back and he felt the weight lift off his shoulders, which made him feel quite good. And that's when I pick, picked up on the two magpies, not blackbirds, magpies. And two magpies signify joy, because one for sorrow, two for joy. I actually saw two this morning, so I'm thinking it's going to be a good good uh, day. So, let's find out what he does in his new found freedom, shall we? So, he walked round his kingdom, followed by the cats. At the back of the valley, the path was overgrown with brambles. No one had been there for years. Soon it would start to look green again as the last of the rubbish disappeared under, um, disappeared under grass and bushes. So just like our science experiment, it's starting to grow over the top. First thing, could you get two more laptops out for me, please? The paper bag prince climbed up into an old lorry. He kept a little camping stove there and all the other things he needed to make a pot of tea. I should be drinking champagne, he said out loud. On a special day like this, I've never had champagne. I wonder what it's like. Grey Cat couldn't tell him. She'd never had champagne either. So there we go. And that's the screen. Look, this is the lorry where he's making his tea. So, uh, we actually hear him speak again, which is quite nice. So, I'm going to include some uh, questions underneath, so you can crack on and answer them. And I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye!